All right, 2.15.16. You'll notice this is a week later after my last upload. I do apologize for doing back-to-back -back deadlift and overhead press workouts. However, Glenn was sick on Thursday, and because it was cold, I just decided to not work out on Thursday. I know, really, I should have went out there. But oh well, didn't do it. So back into deadlifts. Now what was nice about today is all of the soreness from that terrible, terrible squat challenge is gone. If you haven't seen that, you should go check out that squat challenge. But it's the threes night for me, and Glenn decided that he was just going to do threes. As I mentioned in the last video, he's doing really well on deadlifts, and I think you're really going to see that again in this session. He is using 355 pounds here for his second attempt. Really, everything is looking good. And uh, this is my second attempt here with uh, 405. Now, some of the people were asking me, why do I pull the bar away from myself? So I figured I'd go ahead and mention that here. The main reason is so I can breathe. When I am down in the bottom of a deadlift, my belly gets pushed up against my thighs and I cannot breathe. So by pushing the bar away from myself, it allows me to breathe. It is 100% a fat guy reason. So if you don't have that problem, you don't need to do it. But there is actually another good reason for doing this, and I'm explaining this as Glenn's doing his last set, 3 plus from 405 here. I'm not really talking about him, but he's looking good, right? So back to the explanation. If you push the bar away from yourself, you have to do what? Pull it back in. So as you are pulling the bar back into yourself, you will be engaging your lats. When you engage your lats, it locks in your upper back, your middle back, and it stabilizes the spine. And it also allows me to pull the slack out of the bar. So that's pretty good. This is 455 pounds. This is my last set going for the three plus and you know you can see here now I'm not having any problems at the lockout because again my hamstrings are no longer sore but unlike uh, last video my limitation was my hands my hands are not a big fan of me today and Glenn decided that he was going to head it and go 455 for a single. So this is a pretty big single for Glenn, although he did pull uh, more last week. Hit. See there, Good. One. one up. So he is, again, continuing to increase. Got a little bit lightheaded there at the end. And I decided to do a single with 505. So on my threes day, when I do that, the singles will be a little bit lower. And there we go, 505. So went up all right. Again, nothing impressive, nothing fast. And we decided to do a back offset, and we kept the weight kind of up there at 405. <laughs> and Glenn's just wondering whether or not he wants to actually try that again. So uh, check this out. He's getting all set, getting psyched up. And uh, he pulls what we call a Glen in the gym. Yeah, that's that's a Glen. So here's my back off set with 105 pounds. Uh, just kind of trying to get a little bit more volume in there and make sure that I'm getting some work in. Although, as I've mentioned several times, my recovery on this diet is not that great. So I have to be careful to not push the volume too hard. Now we're going into the overhead press workout. And this was a five set night for me. So what I wanted to do is do five sets of five. Glenn decided that he was going to do his best to try and do that as well, but it came down to five sets of the most he could. So this is 165 pounds, which last week he was doing for triples. So his first set went really well here. He got uh, the required amount of reps and back into me. And uh, this workout, now you can notice what I've been mentioning the last two 
videos I wasn't really happy with how far my head was coming through this is what I wanted to see as the bar is clearing my head my head is actually coming through underneath the bar I'm driving the bar in a straight pattern that's what I wanted and we went into pull downs and what we're going to do is a pull down after every set of overhead press this is the heaviest we've gone on pull downs and it's 175 pounds uh, I didn't do that in kilograms but you can see there we are getting a little bit of cheating going on with uh, the, the body it, we're trying to basically do some crunches as we're pulling down getting a little momentum so I actually watched this after doing it because I felt like it wasn't good and we lowered the weight down on the pull downs afterwards so going into Glenn on his second set here and you can see it's definitely not going as easy as the first set I was three reps in already starting to become a grinder this fourth one Four, took a lot out of him Six. and he went for five Speed. Head through, head through. And Boss! just wasn't there. Look oh, how close he was, though. He really fought that. I, th I honestly thought he was going to make that when I was watching him do that. But again, just want to point out one last time, this is what I wanted to see from myself, really driving that head forward, making sure that I'm straight at the top and getting that nice bar path. So I'm going to speed this up, but you can see now way less cheating in the pull downs. And we are going to switch over to some music. This right now is 165 pounds instead of 175. All right, cue the music. with that last rep but this is the last set of overhead and unfortunately I am back to talking so you're gonna have to deal with that now you guys are all really excited but I was pretty happy with this workout although I'm not a big fan of five by five for overhead I was excited that I got all the reps that I needed to and I was able to manage to remember to do what I was supposed to do with my head coming forward and this is the last set of overhead. I do apologize for moving the camera around. 
little bit crooked, but you know, it is what it is. You can see some uh, snow and dust blowing around, who knows what that is. But I am leaning back a little bit more than I normally do. I saw a lot of people doing their pull downs this way with a more leaned back position. I just want to try it. Definitely felt the lats more engaged, so going to try and do that from now on. And this is for Richard. And, uh, oh man, yeah, so we tried doing these things. I'm just going to let you listen to the conversations we're having. Okay. Um... No, I guess I'll let you try it. As soon as you get like here, it just wants to pull away from your thumb. Oh shoot. Yeah, as soon as it goes. There's no freaking way. <laughs> nope. All right. It's a weird feeling. Okay. Jeez. One. Two. Is it the grip or the bicep? It's the grip. Okay, you feeling the bicep? Not really. Three. Oh. <laughs> nice. One. Huh. Two. Okay. That's, that looks really easy. Three. Okay. What? Your right hand failed? Oh man. Go! Ah. That's weird. Alright, so obviously we have no idea what we're doing with these. Took the uh, weight down a little bit, as you saw with Glenn's last set here. And uh, we're just using three five pound plates. So, like uh, 2.25 kilogram plates, I think is what they would be. And uh, really was surprised how much I felt this in my fingers. Felt like the whole thing just wanted to bend backwards. And uh, although it worked the grip a little bit, I was not able to push through the finger-breaking pain to actually get enough weight on there to feel the biceps. So we tried a couple different things, ended up doing some... Um, grip work at the end and we did a lot more bicep work once we went inside and of course I didn't record that but uh, back to the actual video so you can hear more complaining and whining and discussion one two three four Uh, oh, yeah, it just feels like my fingers are going to fall off. Yeah, it is. It's very interesting. Oh. Okay, so now this one's locked. Well, that one you're pinching, you're like you're putting all the weight on the pointer finger instead of in the middle of your hand. There you go. Put your fingers on there. No. Nah. No? <laughs> Alright. That's weird. There's no way to do that without it being in the fingers, is there? No. I mean, you could, you could maybe lift it like this, but that's a whole different thing. So we gave up on those. You can see there, uh, the last set, we just oh, used two 10-pound plates, so 20 pounds. And now we've moved on to holds. So this is three 10-pound plates held together. And the time was pretty bad, not going to lie. So may not be doing the plate oh, bicep 28. curls. I mean, play around so with those, try and learn how to do them correctly, but definitely need to work on timed grip holds. So uh, pinch grip translates a little bit better to 
all the powerlifting and strongman events than crushing grip does. So this is something we want to make sure we're getting a little bit more work on than we've been doing. Although most of the time we're probably going to just do static holds with the farmer's handles. Maybe use some fat grips, who knows. We'll see. We'll see what we feel like doing. But definitely going to be doing a lot of variation with grip work. Uh, man, look how I'm standing. I I should not ever stand like that. Just, uh, yeah, we know what that looks like. And that's not how you're supposed to stand when you're left. I, I was just too worried about uh, letting it fall on my foot. I tried to get myself out of the way. Did not have any idea what it looked like. That's crazy. And yes, feel free to make fun of me as much as you want down below. Let me know what you think that looks like. But uh, just finishing this setup, again, did not really hold these as long as we should be able to. And I want to say um, this night we went in and ended up doing a couple of sets with uh, 92.5 on the easy curl bar that I have inside. But as always, that is it. Make sure all of you go lift something heavy. Take it easy. And eat something really nice for me and let me know what you did since I don't get to have any food.